I, 24, female, had been dating my ex-boyfriend, 27, male, for almost a year. We broke up two months back because I'd caught him cheating red-handed with a friend of mine. I went to his house unannounced to surprise him with a box of cupcakes on the morning of our first anniversary and found that the door was already unlocked. I walked in on him lying in bed and cuddling with my friend. That was it. I didn't even give him a chance to explain or apologize and just cut him off entirely. He tried to text me from new accounts, but I didn't even read those messages and blocked those accounts as well. After two weeks, he gave up and we haven't spoken since then. My mother, 46, unfortunately was very attached to my ex-boyfriend and took the news of our breakup really hard. I think it might be because even my dad had cheated on her and then left her while she was pregnant. But that's my best guess. When I told her that my ex had cheated and so we'd broken up, she started consoling me and told me that we were meant to be and we'd find our way back into each other's lives someday. She was sure of it. I thought that was a weird thing to say to console me because I didn't want him to find his way back into my life. I broke up with him for a reason and that reason was another woman. That's something you can't erase from your mind, even if you do try to get back together. So what's the point of even trying to give the cheater a second chance? You'll never be able to fully trust them ever again. It's better to just stay broken up and away from each other. But my mother didn't share that sentiment and kept insisting that we were meant to be. I got really annoyed by her constant reminders, so I told her that even if we were meant to be, I'd rather be single and on my own for the rest of my life than go back to that cheating scumbag. That seemed to shut her up and she didn't bring it up again. The last time she mentioned my ex was almost a month ago. A few days ago, I decided to take my family and a few of my friends out for dinner and drinks to celebrate my birthday. I'd been very busy with work lately and hadn't had the time to meet them. I really missed hanging out with people. So today on my birthday, I finally got all dressed up and headed out after a really long time. A few of my friends were already waiting for me there and I just had to wait for my aunt, my cousins and my mother to arrive. My aunt and her kids, who are around the same age as me, arrived a few minutes after I did. But when I asked about my mother, who lives with her, she said that she'd arrive a little later. My aunt told me that my mother had some work to attend to, so she was going to be a little late and she wanted us to start without her. I felt a little upset because it was my birthday today and my own mother wasn't on time. She knows what punctuality means to me, especially on important occasions, so this was a little annoying. I believe that if you're not on time for days that are important to other people and you don't really value their time, and my mother knows this about me. But anyway, we ordered the food and got to talking. I think around half an hour later, my mother finally arrived with a huge smile on her face. She was dressed to the nines and had a full face of makeup on, which was strange because my mother never really used makeup. And it was on very rare occasions that she even brought out the mascara. It almost looked like it was her birthday and not mine, but she's my mom, so I didn't mind. I welcomed her with a hug as soon as she arrived, and she kissed me on both cheeks before telling me that she had a gift for me. I was kind of confused since she didn't have any bags with her and was carrying a tiny purse. I don't think anything apart from lipstick and her cars would fit into that, so I was sure that whatever my gift was wasn't in there. I asked her where my gift was, and to my surprise, she took her phone out, made a call, and told whoever she'd called to come on in. I think by now, you guys can all guess who she was speaking to then. Yep, bingo. 
It was my ex-boyfriend who walked in moments later in a tux and looked as handsome as ever. My jaw almost dropped open because I hadn't seen the guy since our breakup and here he was, smiling at me as if we were about to get married right here. I didn't even have anything to say and was still processing the news when my mother yelled out, Surprise! How do you like my gift? She actually looked at me, still smiling, and waited for my response while everyone that I'd invited just looked on, horrified at what was happening. My ex actually had the audacity to mouth, answer her, at me, and that made me snap out of my daze. She wanted to know how I liked her gift. I'll tell her how I liked it. Within seconds, I flared up and told her that she'd not only ruined my birthday with this little surprise of hers, but she'd also failed as a mother. She'd proven that she didn't know me and she didn't understand me in the slightest or she wouldn't have done what she did today. And then I told her that if she liked my ex-boyfriend so much, then she could have him all to herself since that's clearly what she wanted. If I was to go by the way she was dressed and the way she'd done her makeup. My mother's eyes were already looking dangerously watery while I was talking to her and the second I said that, she burst into tears and then, still crying, walked out of the restaurant. My ex stood there awkwardly for a few seconds and then left after her. The evening was ruined anyway, so the rest of us decided to make things quick to avoid the uneasiness and awkwardness that had taken over afterwards. I didn't even cut the cake that my aunt had brought for me. She handed it to me for me to take home and it's still in my refrigerator right now, untouched. Dinner was a quick affair and everyone left as fast as they could. I don't even blame them because what else were they supposed to do anyway? I was extremely disappointed and didn't want to stay out for long since I'd wanted this to be a good day, but it had turned out to be pretty awful for me. I got home a few hours ago and I didn't hear from anyone up until half an hour ago when my aunt called me to tell me that my mom still hasn't come home yet and isn't responding to any of her texts or calls. So I decided to call my mom up, more out of obligation than concern, and she answered. She told me in a very cold voice that she was on the roof of her old apartment where she used to live for the first few years after my birth and even before that while she was still with my dad. She told me to tell my aunt not to worry and that she'd be home in an hour and then hung up without even a goodbye or thanks for checking up on her. I know she only goes there when she's terribly upset about something since she told me about it a couple of years ago so what happened today must have hurt her bad. My mom has always been very forgiving, but today, the way she spoke to me on the phone just now was very curt and not like her at all. It felt really out of character, and now I'm worried that I might have crossed a line with that comment about her wanting my ex for herself. But it was her own fault for inviting my ex to my birthday dinner without even bothering to ask me if I was okay with it or not first. I'd already told her several times before this that I had absolutely no interest in getting back with my ex. And if she doesn't understand that, then that's not on me. So AITA for telling my mom that she can have my ex if she wants him so badly after she brought him with her to my birthday dinner without asking me first? Update 1. A lot of you have been asking about my dad and my relationship with him, so I think I'll explain that part of my life even though I didn't think it was relevant, but I guess it is. So my mom met my dad in college and they dated for a couple of years on and off, but my dad was never serious about her. My mom though was fully committed to him in her head and would cry every time he even spoke to another girl. Then, a few years after they graduated, they got together properly and moved in together. My mom got pregnant accidentally a few months later, but my dad didn't want her to have the baby. She insisted on keeping the baby and they started fighting quite frequently because they were both really young and he didn't feel ready to be a dad in any way at all, emotionally or financially. 
My mother was stubborn about it and decided to continue the pregnancy and even told him that he could leave if he wanted to. He didn't leave, probably because his parents knew about the pregnancy as well and wanted him to stay with her. But then when she was six months pregnant, she spotted him cozying up at a restaurant near their apartment with a co-worker of his whom he swore he didn't have a thing for. That was the end of their relationship and my dad terminated his parental rights and left even before I was born. So no, I don't have a relationship with my dad. I haven't ever seen him. In fact, my mother was careful enough to make sure that she erased every single trace of him from her life. So I haven't even seen any photos of him, let alone seen him in person. I know close to nothing about him. And whatever I do know was what my aunt told me when I turned 18. And I persuaded her to tell me what really happened to my dad. I didn't buy my mother's story that my dad had passed away before I was born because then wouldn't she want to remember him? Instead, she always seemed to want to forget about him and would get all weird and misty eyed whenever I talk about him. My aunt finally told me what had really happened and out of respect for my mother, I stopped talking about my dad after that. Something that she should have done out of respect for me as well after I told her in very clear words that I didn't want to get back with my ex. A few years after I was born, my mother decided to move in with her sister. My aunt's husband actually had passed away in an accident, so my mom moved in with her to help her and she'd also saved a fortune on rent. So to me, my family always met my mom, my aunt and my cousins. It's been a whole day and I still haven't spoken to my mother, but my aunt did tell me that she came back home really late last night. So I don't know what she was up to. I don't feel like apologizing to her at all because what she did was quite messed up and just unnecessary. Update two. My ex just texted me from a new number to explain what had happened. He told me that my mother got in touch with me a week ago around the time that I'd invited her for dinner and she told him that she wanted to surprise me. She told him that even though I didn't admit it, she knew that I still had feelings for him and wanted him back. So she'd taken it upon herself to reunite us. It had taken some convincing, but she'd finally managed to persuade him a few days before my birthday to come along with her and he'd agreed, hoping to apologize for whatever he'd done and win me over once more. They'd been late because he'd picked up a cake for me with my mother. He told me that it was my mom who'd said that I would love the surprise and I'd take him back in a heartbeat if he showed up in a tux, which might have been true if we'd fought about something petty, but he'd literally cheated on me. That was the first part of his text. And then he said a couple of things that I'm still just trying to make sense of. He told me that after my mother left the restaurant crying, she asked him to drive her home since she'd come with him and he agreed. But midway, she changed her mind and had him drive her to a different building, her old apartment. And then she invited him to come up with her. He felt bad for her, so he agreed to accompany her and they ended up talking through the night. Long story short, my mother and my ex were friends now. Yeah, it's actually freaking sickening. I feel like I'm going to lose my mind if she keeps this up because this is just not okay. I mean, hello, he cheated on me after a year of being together. My mother of all people should know how that feels. But instead of siding with me, she's having midnight chats on the roof of a building with the guy who cheated on me. It's literally disgusting and I think she's taking what I said to heart. Maybe she does intend on having my ex all to herself. I don't know. It sucks to say this about my own mother, but given the circumstances, I don't know what else to think. I know my ex believes that they're friends, but he doesn't know my mother's past. Or I'm assuming he doesn't since I don't know if that came up while they were talking the other night. 
It's so disgusting to think that when I'd called her up that night, she's actually been talking to my ex. The same ex who I'd been ranting about to her for weeks when we broke up. I can't imagine how deranged someone has to be to do something like this to their own daughter. And this isn't even the worst part of today. No, my ex's text got even worse somehow. He actually had the audacity to say to me that what I'd said to my mother at the restaurant wasn't okay and that I should apologize to her because she'd been hurt by my comment. She'd faced a lot of struggles and hardships as a single mother and I needed to respect her more instead of berating her in front of my friends and family. He even suggested ideas for me to apologize to my mother. It's not his place to tell me how to deal with my family's issues. And it most certainly isn't his place to tell me that I need to respect my mother's struggle. Who the heck does he even think he is? I couldn't believe my eyes when I was reading his text because it was just crazy for me to even think that people could be this delusional. He really thinks that he has the right to be talking to me about things like respect and morals. Like, dude, you were sleeping with my friend behind my back. You're the last person I'm going to tolerate a lesson on morality from. I can't even believe that he typed all that out and then thought that it was good to go. What exactly did he think was going to happen anyway? I'll just go and apologize to my mother immediately afterward because my cheating ex thinks that's the right thing to do. LOL. Fat chance of that happening. As for all the struggles and hardships she had to face while raising me, it really wasn't all that bad. My mother was and still is a working woman and earns quite well. And so does my aunt since they work in the same field. So growing up, my cousins and I had full-time nannies and they never had to worry about us more than other parents do. So I really don't know what struggles she was talking about. I might not know what emotional turmoil she was going through, but other than that, she honestly didn't have to struggle harder than other parents. And if I'm being honest, had my ex not told me whatever he told me today, then I might even have considered apologizing to my mother. But now, there's literally no chance of me apologizing to her now. I don't feel bad about that comment I made anymore because she's out there proving me right. She spent the entire night talking to my ex, so it's very obvious that whatever I said wasn't that untrue either. I just can't believe that my own mother would do this to me. Ugh, I feel sick to my stomach right now. Update three. Okay, I talked to my aunt today and well, things are getting messier by the second. She'd visited me just to check how I was doing since I hadn't spoken to my mother for almost a week now. She also seemed really nervous and jittery so I could tell that something was bothering her. And after a while, I convinced her to spill the beans on whatever she'd actually come to talk to me about. So she did, and I'm still trying to process everything because it's all just so weird and off-putting. My aunt told me that there's a lot more to the friendship between my mother and my ex than what meets the eye. And she's been trying to keep this a secret because she didn't want to put any ideas into my head. But now... She no longer felt like she could hide it from me because my mother had told her about the night she spent on the roof with my ex. She said that everything went back to my dad and I was obviously lost when she said that. So then she pulled out a bunch of pictures from her purse and handed them to me. And oh my God, my ex is literally a carbon copy of my father. They look so similar that I did a freaking double take when I saw those pictures and even thought for one fleeting second that these were actually pictures of my ex because there was just no way that two people could look so similar. I don't know how to explain it, but the resemblance really is creepy and uncanny. They have the same facial structures, the same deep set eyes and long nose. Only my dad had dark hair and my ex's hair is a much lighter shade of brown, but they look very, very similar otherwise. 
I was speechless when I saw those photos and didn't know what to say, even when my aunt was explaining that back when I would brought my ex home to meet my family for the first time, she'd noticed the similarities instantly, and so had my mother. They'd even discussed it at length after I'd left that day, and even while talking about my ex, my mother seemed happy, and it did feel a little weird to see her sister talk about her daughter's boyfriend like that. But she didn't think much of it and didn't bring it up again. But now she thought that it was about time that she came clean to me about everything because she believes that my mother's obsession with my ex has reached a level where it can be referred to as unhealthy and I do agree with her. I have no idea if my ex knows about any of this or not and I don't even know if I should tell him. I haven't responded to the text he sent me a couple of days ago and neither do I intend to because it all feels irrelevant now that I know what I do know. I don't even know what to make of my mother anymore. All my life I believed that she was the one person I could always count on. I obviously love my aunt but she's not my mom. Now I'm just lost because obviously there's a lot more to my mother. This is just concerning to say the least. And while I was mad at her earlier and still am, I also think she needs help. Because going after your daughter's cheating ex only because he looks like your own cheating ex is just psychotic on so many levels. She hasn't dealt with my father leaving as well as she pretends. She has and she needs to speak to a mental health professional about this because this is all just absolutely unacceptable. It's gross. Update 4. Hey everyone. It's been a few weeks and a lot has happened so buckle up, I guess. So right after the last update, I told my aunt that we needed to confront my mother and she'd been unwilling at first, but when I told her that whatever she was up to had to be nipped in the bud or else my mom would become the woman who ran away with her daughter's ex and we had to prevent that somehow. I think the thought of her sister doing something as crazy as that is what convinced my aunt to step in and take matters into her own hands. That day itself, we confronted my mother and even though she was very defensive initially and didn't want to admit anything, she eventually did break down and confess that she had been trying to get together with my ex because of the exact reasons that we'd suspected. She said that she felt like she had a shot with my dad once more and it actually broke my heart to hear her say that. She had a total meltdown when we talked to her about it and it was just so sad. So we made her block my ex everywhere because she'd been talking to him even when I arrived and told her that she needed therapy, to which she agreed. She's already started therapy and I'm hoping this leads to something good for her. I'm still going to keep my distance though. I also informed my ex about the real reason that my mother had been so friendly with him and just as I'd expected, he had no idea about my mother's past. The only reason I even told him any of this was to make sure that he doesn't try to re-establish contact with either me or my mother and I guess it worked because I haven't heard from him since and I pray that I won't in the future either. Stay tuned for more stories from Argo Relationships.